The United States has said that it will soon impose new sanctions on Iran's missile and drone program. This comes after Iran's attack on Israel last weekend. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has said that the sanctions will also target the Iranian Revolutionary Guards and the country's defense ministry. Meanwhile, the European Union has also said that it's looking to expand sanctions on Tehran. Israeli President Isaac Herzog held talks with the British and German foreign ministers in Jerusalem this morning. British Foreign Minister David Cameron and Germany's Annalena Baerbock are the first Western diplomats to visit Israel after Iran's attack. In the meeting, Herzog called on the international community to work defiantly against Iran. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has accused Western nations of double standards. This is for speaking out against Iran over its attacks on Israel, but not condemning Israel's suspected attack on Iran's consulate in Syria. Meanwhile, Erdogan also blamed Israel for escalating tensions in West Asia. Erdogan alleged that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is stoking tensions in the region to prolong his political tenure. A Hezbollah commander was killed in an Israeli attack yesterday. The Israeli army said it struck Hezbollah targets in Lebanon. This resulted in the death of three people, including Hezbollah commander Ismail Baz. The army added that he was killed after an airstrike hit his car. Meanwhile, Hezbollah has issued a statement mourning Baz's death. For the foreign ministers of the G7 countries will meet in Italy today. The meeting will last until April 19th. The situation in West Asia is expected to dominate talks between the ministers. They will also likely discuss China's help for Russia in building up its military strength. Meanwhile, the U.S. and Chinese defense ministers held their first substantive talks in nearly 18 months. America's Security uh, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin spoke with his Chinese counterpart Dong Jun via a video call yesterday. The talks paved the way for the countries to work on restoring military ties. In the UK, lawmakers have backed a plan to ban anyone born after the year 2009 from buying cigarettes. With this, Rishi Sunak's flagship smoking ban passed its first parliamentary hurdle. This was despite opposition from several leading conservative lawmakers. The voting gives way for, uh, for the ban to eventually become a law. Uh, if that happens, the UK's smoking laws will be among the strictest in the world. In Georgia, riot police dispersed protesters from around the uh, country's parliament. Videos show the authorities kicking one of the protesters during the demonstrations. This was after they gathered outside the parliament as lawmakers debated the country's new foreign agents bill. The bill will require organizations who receive more than 20% of their funding from abroad to register as foreign agents. In Croatia, citizens have begun voting in the country's parliamentary election. More than 2,000 candidates are competing for 151 seats in parliament. The elections uh, set a stage uh, for a showdown between the country's top two officials. While Prime Minister Andrei Plekovic seeks a new term, he's up against the president, Zoran Milanovic. The two men had been engaged in bitter campaigning ahead of the election. Meanwhile, voting has also begun across the Solomon Islands. As many as 420,000 voters, registered voters will go to polls, uh, while structural reforms in the areas of healthcare and education will be a key focus, the country's relations with China are largely weighing on voter minds. Venezuela has ordered the closure of its embassy and consulates in Ecuador. This comes as the country stands in solidarity with Mexico. Earlier this month, the Ecuadorian police raided the Mexican embassy in uh, Quito. This was to arrest former Ecuadorian Vice President Jorge Glass. Following this, Mexico suspended all diplomatic relations with Ecuador. 
Myanmar's detained former leader Aung San Suu Kyi has been moved from prison to house arrest. A military official said that the move comes in the wake of a heat wave. They say that uh, necessary precautions have been taken for most inmates to protect them from a heat stroke. Uh, Suu Kyi Aung San Suu Kyi is serving a 27-year sentence for a host of criminal convictions ranging from corruption to breaching Myanmar's telecommunications law. New Zealand's Prime Minister Christopher Luxon met his Thai counterpart Shreta Thavisen in Bangkok this morning. This is Luxon's first official visit to Thailand since uh, after taking office. The two leaders uh, held bilateral talks and agreed to upgrade their relations to a strategic partnership by 2026. They also signed agreements to strengthen business cooperation across various sectors. In climate news, the desert city of Dubai is experiencing unusual flooding due to torrential rain. According to reports, the city received a year and a half's worth of rain within 24 hours. Roads and houses are submerged in, under the flood water. Operations at the Dubai International Airport also came to a standstill. Meanwhile, in Oman, flash floods have killed at least 18 people. Oman's al sharqiya province remains the most hard hit, partly due, uh, due to the downpour. Air operations are being conducted to rescue stranded people. Footage showed police authorities airlifting people uh, from the flood. Colombia's capital, Bogota, is currently under a water rationing directive. Neighborhoods have been, uh, water has been cut from uh, some neighborhoods for 24 hours. That's because the region is experiencing drought due to weather changes. Some areas are not getting a constant supply of running water. Local authorities have th uh, threatened to find those found wasting water. Meanwhile, water scarcity in Ecuador is affecting the region's electricity supply. Cities are under electricity rationing as water levels in the hydroelectric plants are depleting. People have been experiencing an acute power crisis as electricity is cut off for three hours every day. India is currently experiencing the onset of summer. The Indian Meteorological Department has forecasted a heat wave for some parts of the country. States like Maharashtra, West Bengal and Andhra Pradesh have been alerted to brace for the hot weather. Rainfall, hailstorms and thunderstorms have been predicted for regions such as Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. In the Philippines, scuba divers are planting nurseries to help the damaged coral reefs in the region. These nurseries will aid in the growth and recovery of damaged coral. The coral reefs are threatened by climate change, plastic waste and dynamite fishing. At a global ocean summit in Greece, countries committed to at least, committed at least $10 billion in pledges to safeguard the ocean. These pledges will address issues like uh, sustainable fishing, pollution, maritime security and protected areas. The three-day conference saw the participation of 120 delegates from across the world. On to business and tech news, the International Monetary Fund has slightly raised its forecast for global economic growth. The global lender expects global, uh, the world economy to grow by 3.2% in 2024. This is marginally higher uh, than its uh, January forecast of 3.1%. The IMF cited strong growth in the US and other emerging, mar and, uh, emerging markets for its improved forecast. The IMF expects the US economy to grow by 2.7% in 2024. However, it's also warned that persistent inflation and geopolitical tensions can uh, pose risks for the global economy. The IMF has also raised economic, uh, the economic growth forecast for India. The global lender expects India to grow by 6.8% in 2024 to 2025. It had projected India's gross domestic, uh, domestic product uh, to grow by 6.5%. The IMF has cited strong domestic demand in the country for its robust economic outlook. 
Investment banking giant Morgan Stanley's profits surged by 14% in the first quarter of 2024. The firm earned over $3.4 billion in the first three months of this year. Morgan Stanley's revenue also rose by 4% to over $15 billion in the same period. Strong growth in the firm's wealth management and investment banking units has been attributed to this earnings surge. Meanwhile, reports say that Morgan Stanley is planning to cut around 13% of its workforce in Asia. The job cuts are expected to impact around 50 investment bankers in the region. Bankers based in China and Hong Kong are expected to be the most affected by the layoffs. In recent days, many investment banks have reduced their workforce in China. This is due to the, their declining business activities in the country. American video game firm Take-Two Interactive uh, software is laying off around 600 employees. The firm is known for its games like Grand Theft Auto, Battleborn and uh, Borderlands. Job cuts uh, represent around 5% of the firm's total workforce. The move aims to save around $165 million for the firm. To reduce uh, costs, Take-Two Interactive is also scrapping uh, many of its under-development projects. German sportswear brand Adidas is, uh, has raised its earning, earnings forecast by 3% for 2024. This is after the firm reported a multifold rise in its quarterly profits. Adidas earned over $350 million in profits in the first quarter of 2024. This is compared to just over $60 million in profits reported in the same period last year. The firm's revenue also grew by 4% during the same period. Dutch chip equipment maker ASML's new orders have sharply declined in the first quarter of 2024. The firm received over $3.8 billion worth of new orders in the first three months of this year. This is compared to over $9.7 billion worth of new orders in the that the firm received in the previous quarter. In the first quarter of a ASML's profit stood at $1.3 billion. Nine Google employees were detained after protesting at the firm's offices in New York and California. The employees were demanding uh, that Google drop its contract with the Israeli government. The firm provides cloud services to the Israeli government. In California, protesters staged a sit-in protest for more than eight hours. Later, the police were called to arrest the employees after they refused to leave. Apple CEO Tim Cook has said that the firm will consider building a manufacturing facility in Indonesia. Cook's comments came after his meeting with the country's president, Joko Widodo, in J Jakarta. Apple CEO, the Apple CEO arrived in Indonesia yesterday. During his visit, Cook inaugurated the firm's new Developers Academy in the country. Elon Musk's social media platform X has reversed its stance in Brazil. The firm has reportedly informed the country's Supreme Court that it will comply with all the, all the court's orders. Last week, the Brazilian Supreme Court ordered uh, X uh, to block certain accounts in the country. However, the firm's owner, Elon Musk, had said that they would defy the court's order. Moving to sports, let's start with cricket. Rajasthan Royals beat the Kolkata Knight Riders by two wickets in the Indian Premier League last night. Kolkata batted first and put up a total of 223 runs with Sunil Nareen uh, scoring a century. Rajasthan chased down the target in a nail-biter. Joss Butler smashed a century and a six on the final delivery to seal the match for Rajasthan. Rajasthan Royals leg spinner Yuzvendra Chahal registered the most expensive spell in the history of the Indian Premier League. Batters from the Kolkata Knight Riders smashed Chahal for 54 runs in his four overs last night. The leg spinner managed to take one wicket but had an economy rate of 13.50. Chahal broke his own record for the most costly over in IPL history. In 2015, Chahal gave away 51 runs in four overs, giving him the record for the most expensive IPL uh, spell. In football, the German club Borussia Dortmund edged past Spain's Atletico Madrid in the Champions League last night. Dortmund won the second leg 4-2 in a high-scoring match. The German club went into half-time with a two-goal lead. Then, Atletico scored an own goal and conceded another due to sloppy defending. However, the Spanish side netted two goals in an attempt to make a comeback. 
Despite losing the first leg to Atletico, Dortmund won 5-4 on aggregate to advance to the Champions League semi-final. French club Paris Saint-Germain downed Spanish giants Barcelona in yesterday's Champions League match. Barcelona scored early on thanks to a goal by Rafinha in the 12th minute. However, they were restricted to 10 men after Ronald Araujo got a red card for a nasty foul. Then, PSG scored four goals in a row, with striker Kylian Mbappe scoring a double. PSG beat Barcelona 6-4 on aggregate to qualify for the Champions League semi-final. Meanwhile, Spanish authorities called in riot police for the Champions League match between Barcelona and PSG last night. This was after some PSG fans chucked flares and fireworks at Barcelona supporters outside the stadium. The Spanish riot police resorted to using batons to stop an escalation after some fans made derogatory gestures. The, the Champions League organizers have launched an investigation into the flare-up. In tennis, Rafael Nadal made a winning return from injury at the Barcelona Open. Spain's Nadal beat Italy's Flavio Caboli 6-2, 6-3 in straight sets. The match lasted 1 hour and 25 minutes. Nadal next plays Australia's Alex de Menoir in the second round. In basketball, the Los Angeles Lakers beat the New Orleans Pelicans today. The final score was 110 to 106 in favor of the Lakers. Despite Zion Williamson scoring 40 points, the Pelicans fell short by four. LeBron James was the highest scorer for the Lakers with 23 points. The Lakers have now secured the last berth for the NBA playoffs. In wrestling, India bagged nine medals at this year's Asian Championships. These were held in Kyrgyzstan's capital, Bishkek. However, the Indian contingent of 30 wrestlers failed to secure a single gold medal. Women wrestlers clinched six silvers and the men won three silvers in the freestyle category. But the Indian wrestlers drew a blank in Greco-Roman style wrestling. Out of the 14 participating nations, India finished ninth. Japan topped the tally with 18 medals. In golf, four-time major champion Rory McIlroy has rejected the rumours of his move to live golf. The Scottish pro golfer said, and I quote, I will play at PGA Tour for the rest of my life. The clarification comes after reports say that McIlroy was offered a deal worth $850 million and a 2% equity stake to join the Saudi-backed live golf. Australia and Canada have unveiled their uniforms for the upcoming Paris Olympics. The Australian uniform features indigenous artwork on the pocket squares of the blazers and scarves. Meanwhile, Canada showcased its uh, uniforms for both the Olympic and Paralympic athletes. In entertainment news, footballer Travis Kelsey will be hosting a game show called Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? The show will revolve around contestants solving 11 elementary level questions and they can ask celebrities to help them. The makers have already completed the shooting schedule for the show. The streaming date is yet to be announced. Now moving on to Travis Kelsey's beau, Taylor Swift. A new comic book showcasing Swift's uh, philanthropic endeavors will hit the markets on April 24th. The comic book is a sequel to a female force, Taylor Swift. The 22-page book will be available in both soft and hardcover editions. The cover has been created by renowned Marvel Comics artist Pablo Martinena. Shakira has announced the dates for her upcoming world tour. She revealed on social media that her tour will begin on November 2nd in California. Her performance uh, in California will be followed by stops in Los Angeles, Miami and Chicago. Shakira will be performing songs from her new albums and her all-time hits. She calls it the tour of her life. Artists Cardi B, Queen Latifah and The Roots will be headlining the Bet Experience concerts in Los Angeles. The event makes a return after a five-year hiatus. The cancellations were due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The concert will take place before the Bet Awards, which are, due, uh, which are scheduled for the 30th of June. 
According to reports, South Korean boy band Stray Kids might be releasing a new album. The album will most likely be released in June this year. It'll mark their return after a hiatus of seven months. An official comeback date is yet to be announced, though. Tom Holland took to X to post about his partnership with the cryptocurrency platform. The post urged users to register with the site to get early access. However, the post was later deleted. This raised concerns that Holland's account was likely hacked. Two fans of Ana de Armas settled a, a case of false advertising related to her. The uh, grievance uh, sued Universal in 2022 over renting a film which didn't feature the actor. The trailer for the film yesterday showed Anna de Mars, but her role was removed from the final cut. The fans alleged that they had been cheated out of uh, $3.99. They've now accepted a settlement, the terms of which have not been disclosed. The premiere for the upcoming series Knuckles was held in London. It's a spin-off of the series Sonic the Hedgehog. Edris Elba, who uh, voiced the lead character, attended the premiere along with others. Uh, Knuckles will start streaming on uh, April 26th. Work on the second season of the hit Netflix series Wednesday is underway. The makers have now reportedly roped in uh, the actor Steve Buscemi for the role of the principal. Buscemi has worked on uh, films like Fargo, The Sopranos and uh, Bo uh, shows like uh, Fargo, The Sopranos and Boardwalk Empire. The show's production will uh, likely begin this month. The character of Loki is the most uh, popular anti-hero of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Tom Hiddleston, who plays the iconic character, doesn't consider the role villainous. He sees Loki as a broken soul with a shattered heart. Hiddleston says that Loki felt like he didn't belong anywhere. From impeachment to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.